Our dear Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we want to thank you because you are a great God. God who always speaks to us through your word. I pray that you will bless us richly with your word today as we celebrate this very special Holy Communion service. We thank you and we honor you in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May you be seated, please. Allow me, brethren, to greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord again. Amen. It is indeed a great honor to be an Anglican. Today, I have sat down in this service and felt the Anglican beating me, being touched, especially by the choir oh, yeah. as they have bellowed out songs even without the keyboard, songs from postulants of a mixture of dioceses. In the postulants that was uh, that sung, I saw somebody from Butere leading the choir very ably. I saw postulants from Kitale Diocese, from Eldred Diocese, from Katsape Diocese, and even uh, from Kapenguria Diocese that happens to be my home diocese. And also I have seen that there is great blessings in being an Anglican and to serve in the Anglican church. I feel fulfilled and even if my tour of duty ended here, I could go excited knowing that there is something that we have left for the generations to come. Now me to share some few words from God's word. The psalm that was appointed for today is Psalm 30. Allow me to say that this Psalm 30 was written by King David around 1000 BC. Around that particular time, King David was at the apex. His kingdom had expanded from all the shores. He was the undisputable king. There was no rival. And he asked a man by the name of Joab, Joab, can you please take a census? Take a census of my army so that I can know that I am a great person, a great king. And when he took the census, he forgot that victory was not brought by the army. But finally, victory was necessitated by the sovereign God who superintends the affairs of men. And God was annoyed with David. And finally, to cut the long story short, David was assailed by an ailment, a disease. And he thought that he was not going to make it. I want to tell you, he saw the grave, God being very near. He was weak, and his friends counted him. And they said, here was a man who depended upon God. But now he is finished, he is kaput. And they gloated over the sickness of David. But at this particular time, this is the time that he turned to God. And when he turned to God, God miraculously healed him. And when God healed him, he prepared, uh, he prepared the, the materials to build the altar. <laughs> when the altar was dedicated or oh, his palace, he wrote this psalm, a psalm of David, telling us of the deeper most times. I want to tell you as we live on the planet Earth, there are times when we are low and down. There are times when we are up. In fact, one of the biblical scholars says, but Psalms, as you read the Psalms, you get the orientation. At first, 
In Psalm 30 verse 6, David was doing well before he did that tragic sin. He was oriented well. Then when he was assailed by this sickness, he was disoriented. But later, when he prayed and God answered his prayer, he was reoriented. This is a psalm of reorientation. I want to tell you in life, sometimes we are the top. Then later, something comes and it disorients us. And later, we, if we turn to God, we will be reoriented. I want to say that long time ago, I went to preach in a place called Tane. Tane is in Kabras land. If the servant of God by the name of Mohulund was around, he could have told you that Tane is part of um, Kabras land. And when I went to preach there, for the first time I drank water with faith, not knowing that there is a river that is called Nzoia, and it passes through pan paper, and the water was not very clean. So I took water by faith without boiling, and I contracted a disease that was called typhoid. I want to tell you the most severe disease. <laughs> I went to college, and I was brought home sick, and in fact I thought I could not see another day again. I thought that I couldn't make it. In the morning, one of the ladies has visited me and said, Jesus, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. I thought the lady that did not know anything about typhoid. How can you tell me to rejoice? I was in a hospital, admitted. That was the first time I was admitted. And I want to tell you, in the hospital, it's very difficult to sleep. The lights are on 24-7. And somebody like me from the mountain, we only sleep after the lights have been switched off. <laughs> so I was suffering psychologically, tortured and disoriented. But I cried to God. God heard my cries and he healed me. Later I reported to college, but a bit late. In our former college, it's now Kenya Highlands University. <laughs> when you missed 11 lessons, that semester considered done. You will never be allowed. But I had paid money. <coughs> so on, on Saturday, one of the Sundays, I went to preach in a place called, um, in a place called, uh, in a place down there, it was uh, Kipsolu Secondary. Then later I went to Chebangang ACK Church. I preached and uh, the Kipsigis are very generous people. They gave us music until six when we were in the road, on the road, waiting for a vehicle. And I want to tell you, I thought I could not make it for the semester. Everything seems to have fallen apart. If I was not going to be in college that evening, and if I missed the Monday class, my semester could be gone. And I was in dire straits. But I prayed. When you feel you will not make it, what do you do? Sometimes, not only in school fees, even in your home, even with your children, even with your relatives and relations, financial issues that sometimes you feel you are not going to make it. What do you feel? What do you, what do you do when you feel that you cannot make it? I turned to God. I prayed. I said, God, you are the one who called me to this ministry. Dear Lord, you are the one who will enable me. Dear Lord, I pray that you will provide a vehicle that I will go back to college today. I know it seems impossible, but I have turned to you, the living God, Redeemer. When you feel that you are not going to make it, it is my humble prayer that you will turn to God. And after I prayed, as I was stopping every vehicle, it was passing me. 
And all the vehicles who are returning to Chebanga are none going to town. Until now, I give up and say, God, in your hands I leave everything. Even if I will not complete the semester, I have relaxed. And as I was going to sit down with some, with two of my colleagues, the next vehicle I did not need to, to, to stop it. It was my vicar, Venerable Canon Isaac Koich. And he asked me, he just stopped the vehicle and said, Jesus, what are you doing here? I did not bother to tell him what I said. I just want to go to town. He had a small pickup. And I saw, when we turn to God, God always answers. <laughs> Let me tell you the story of the man that today we are going to bless. On 2nd of January, the year of our Lord, 2019. Me with Reverend Kizito, we boarded a vehicle in Kitale. Coming to reports. I did not know what the future portends. <coughs> I was not certain whether I was going to make it in the theological college. I was used to preaching, and I want to tell you a pastoral visitation. The best of it all, the most, the most amazing meals are in pastoral. Chakula ya ngufu. Inapatikana kwa pastoral. Nyama, mchele, ndizi. Ana nilikuwa ni maona mambo haya yote, ni meachana nae. I'm going to a theological college. By the way, my first theological college was Kenya Highlands. The second one was uh, purchased from university. The third one was African Nazarene University. The fourth one was Africa International University. I did not know anything about St. Paul's Theological College Capsabet. Thank God I had uh, the then, not now, not then, academic dean, the cool Reverend Kizito. So he was busy shepherding me around. And as he shepherded me around, uh, we came to the college and we were all lost. Thank God there was Julius around. And I thank God Julius is in this service. Julius and Nikoana to Tia Moya. We are trying to make sense and it was not making any sense. Will I make it? Will I make it in St. Paul's? Thank God. We turned to God and I uttered a silent prayer and said, God, will I make it? Immediately, somebody oozed out of his room. His name is the Reverend Maritim Rene. The most jovial of all the, uh, the tutors that I've ever come across. The man who has taken us to Steve Knights. And all these good blessings. The man who I will never ever forget. And I want to tell you, he took us like a father. He welcomed us. He prepared supper for us, the most delicious of all. And I want to say, I will ever be indebted to this man. Why? When we felt that we could not make it. But we turned to God. And God answered us. And he answered us through the Reverend Pere. May the Lord richly bless you. Amen. Wherever you go, when you feel that you can't make it, the title of my sharing today is Turn to God. Amen. I have taught people something that is called academic writing. I have told certain people, <laughs> Mahela, I have pushed you and pressed you I remember there is a man who left, I've never seen him again. <laughs> but I want to tell you, when you feel low, when you feel you cannot make it, the answer is turn to God. When you turn to God, what do you do? Number one, acknowledge, I will acknowledge God's hand. Just as I've testified, I've acknowledged God's hand through Reverend Maritim. God's hand was with us through him. 
He encouraged us. He shepherded us. He told us, don't kill yourself. <laughs> the notes are here in the library. He encouraged us a great deal. And when David, who was sick, when he acknowledged God's hand, he was drawn up. God drew him from his sickness and healed him when you turn to God. God draws you up. He lifts you up. He heals you from both spiritual as well as physical illness. He heals us from anxiety. And I want to tell you, some people are anxious about what is happening at home. But I want to tell you, turn to God. He will heal you from all your anxiety. Then he is going to restore you. May the Lord restore your joy, your peace, your confidence, and your hope in him. When you are down, when you think you cannot make it, turn to God and acknowledge God's hand. When God's hand is with you, there is nothing that is impossible. God will heal you. God will lift you up. In fact, David thought that he was in the grave. But God lifted him up and he healed him. Number two, when I am down, when I think that I am out, I will confess God's mercy. It is by the mercy of God that we are here. It has been four years, but it is the mercy of God. Some people thought, told me, are you going to make it? I told them it is the mercy of God. I stand here as a testimony that God is merciful. And I want to say when you know that God is fat, merciful, remember that God is faithful. Sometimes we are not faithful, but our God is ever faithful. faithful. He will not leave us, neither will he forsake us. He is a merciful God. He provides for us even sometimes when we do not deserve it. He forgives us. God forgave David the sin of taking the place of God. He was able to forgive David. Then later, he gave David another chance. We are all the product of God's second chance. We have seen in so many ways. Sometimes we felt this ministry we do not deserve. But God is a God of another chance. We are here today because God is a God of another chance. Praise the Lord. Amen. Did I tell you this story that one day, as I was walking in town without a collar, I met somebody who I knew a long time ago. He had not seen me for 17 years. 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 He had not seen me for in a Gwanga Bangi. So, to Atuja Kutan, no young to seventeen years. I live on Yona Gazama Chesos with thank goodness. Nemeiba Bunia Shirini of a bang, I have twenty thousand. Wokitaka Tapunua Changaya Ba, Ama Changaya Kitoro Choroni. Wokitaka to Tafana Kenya Utataka. Nekamambia, you are right except one thing. Mimi, Nilipati on a moon, on a fasi appeal. Nika okolewa na mimi ni mchungaji wa kanisa la kinyamilikana. Haka niangalia kutokea mkuu mpaka kitu. Haka sema wawu kiwa padri kila mtu waneza kuwa padri. Nika sema ni peli kila mtu waneza kuwa padri. Because we serve a God of another chance. And I want to tell you God has given padri another chance to serve somewhere. And you never know. He may give you another chance to come back and teach. Our God is a great God. A God of another chance. You never know. You may come back here another time as a chancellor of this university. You never know. God is a God of another chance. And it is my prayer that you will turn to God and confess God's mercy. 
Thirdly, you will seek to know the will of God. When you are down, when you think you can't make it, seek to know the will of God. May God's will in his word guide you and lead you. There is a song that we sing. I know my friend from Marama will put it better. Niongo Zebuana no Okay, guide me, O thou great Jehovah. Pilgrim through this barren land. When you are down, seek the will of God. Seek the guidance of God. Don't quit. Seek the will of God. And I want to tell you, seek the will of God. Some of you wanted to quit. Some of you wanted to leave this institution. But you turned to God and sought his will. And you are there up to now. Do you know sometimes God allows certain people to become like sandpaper to you? Sandpaper is rough, senor. Like in the will of God, you have to go to a sandpaper and you go soft. So how hard do they want to support? See, I didn't want to God has allowed them to make sure that you are not going to be soft. You are going to be You are clean and ready to serve God. They remove the excesses in us. The last thing is that I'll turn to God and wholly surrender to him. I will surrender to God to provide for me. I will surrender to God to protect me. I will surrender to God to preserve me. My senior colleague, mentor, friend, surrender to God so that he will provide for you. I know you lack nothing. He will protect you and he will preserve you. May the Lord postulants be your provider. Amen. And even the staff who are here, I'm very happy that you are here for this service. Wherever you go, may the Lord provide for you. Amen. May the Lord protect you. May the Lord preserve you against all the dangers and temptations as we go to these Christmas festivities. As you travel, may the Lord protect you. When you are with the family, may the Lord provide for you and for your children and for yourself that in the month of April, you will come back and will hear these beautiful voices to the glory and honor of God's name. When you are down next time, because it is not if, it is when. When you will be down, turn to God. Acknowledge God's hand. <coughs> Confess! God's mercy. Seek his will and lastly surrender all to God. May the Lord be with us. And if there is something that you feel we should pray together, by faith, tell God in your heart and I will pray with you. The Lord be with you. And also be with you. In your hands, dear Lord, we commit ourselves. I pray, dear Lord, but the words that we have heard with our outermost ears, may they be engrafted in us. May it give the fruits of good living. Dear Lord, I pray that when we think we cannot make it, remind us to turn to you. Dear Lord, I pray that we'll acknowledge your hand. May your hand be upon us in the challenges that we face. Dear Lord, may we seek your mercy to forgive us and to give us another chance. Dear Lord, may we be guided to your will. Dear Lord, may, you, may we wholly surrender to you. May you bless us, guide us, and lead us. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.